Hi, my name is Shad, and we're going to talk about designing databases and tables in this video. So I have in front of us here a problem statement for how we would design a store database. So let's look at these details and then look at some diagrams that we can find online that will help us in making this choice. So first of all, what's our problem statement? It says here, you are tasked to design a database to store for an online game store, a war game store. Now the game allows uh, registered users to shop for weapons, purchase weapons, and then access previously purchased weapons in, a, in support of playing the online game. So let's take a look at what kind of tables would be in here and what kind of process we'd be trying to do. So let's first of all see if we can figure out what kind of units are in this store. Well, first of all, take a look at some of the nouns. So I see the word users, and they actually capitalize it in the description of the problem. That gives us a hint that we're going to have a table for users. Also, weapons is capitalized, and that's another one of the nouns in our project. So we're going to have a table for weapons. So you might call that products when you're searching for a store because sometimes general purpose names like products are more common to find in your Google searches than weapons. What else do we need? Well, let's see. We're going to have to purchase these things. So it doesn't really tell us what item you would have for a purchase, but we'll figure that out. So let's go see what we have for the business requirements. You must be able to register themselves. So that sounds like a login to a user's table. You're going to have to purchase weapons from an online store using a credit card. So you probably have to have a credit card field for the user or maybe a table of credit cards. We'll see about that. It says here that the, um, there's going to be a, a purchase notification whenever they buy a weapon. Uh, there's going to have to be quite a few different weapons in this store. So over up to a million different things in the, in the table. So we might think about indexing when you see a number that's that large. The next line in the statement gives us something about what the table is going to look like. So the weapons table itself will have these properties. So the columns that are going to be in the weapons table include name, description, power value, image. So the image is probably just a string. Don't, don't let that image fool you. And then the purchase price. So that'll be a number, obviously. Then it says here the, the user will be able to search for weapons. So uh, that doesn't tell us anything about the database design. It just tells us what the program is going to do. And so we're going to have keywords from the name as well as the price. So those are just things that are in the program, not necessarily in your database design. And then it says here, we're going to be able to access all previously purchased weapons. Now, what that says implicitly is that there's going to be an orders table. There's going to be a place where you can place an order. And so let's, uh, let's move on now and look at some examples that we could find that would help us out. So if you were to look online for some sample databases, probably the most famous one is called Northwind Traders. Northwind Traders is a Microsoft database that they use for all of their training materials, whether you're learning to program in Access or in uh, SQL or whatever it is. So uh, it's a company, it's a fake company. But they set it up as a model that we could probably learn from. So I'm gonna click in this image search for Northwind Traders and hopefully get a larger version of this. So somebody at Medium has built a blog about this. So let's bring it up to a larger size. Now, what can we learn from this? Well, this is a store, and so some of the features in this table are going to look like the one that you're tasked to design. First of all, they have a table called Customer. So if we look at that, you can see they have all kinds of properties for customers. Then there is a table over here called order, and you can see that there's a link between them so that each customer can have multiple orders. Now the orders table is going to have a bunch of items in it that include the date when you ordered it, and um, then there's a, a link to another table called order details, and then finally we get to product. So this is one uh, app application that you should study and see if you can figure out how they're doing things. What you're going to notice here is that there are these intermediate tables between products and orders. There's this order detail. Let's talk about why that would work. So I'm going to open up another Google image search. So I'm searching for order form invoice and let's take a look here for a moment at what a typical order looks like. So let's see, I'm going to pick one of these. I'll try this first one here. So an order form. 
So let's see if we can use this order form to realize what we need to put in our tables. So each item in your orders table is going to represent a page like this, an order. You're going to see that on each order there is a area for the customer. So we're not going to duplicate information, so we are going to have a foreign key between an order and the customer because we want to pull in the customer's name and address and things like that. Then there's certain things that belong specifically to an order, such as the date when the order was fulfilled, and it looks like here an order number. So that sounds like an ID number in the table. Then there's a total at the bottom, and maybe some tax, and so that's going to be uh, one of the properties of each order. Now the catch, and the hard part to understand, is how to fill in this major, the, bar, the largest part of the order form. So where does this refer to when you make an order? To solve that, let's look at another example here. So I'm going to open up another search. This one says we're going to look for store database tables orders. Okay, so that's uh, an image search. And this is a much simpler version than what we saw with the Northwind traders. This gets right to the problem that you're trying to solve. So we have a customer, and the customer table is very simple. In this case, it has just two things. It has a name and a phone number. Then the order has a link here. As you can see, this is a one to many relationship. So this means that one customer can have many orders. Now, the order itself is very sparse. There's no details about it. It just has the ID. In the case of our order form, though, we would probably want to add things like the date and maybe the total. So we would add that as uh, fields or row numbers here. Then the link between products and orders is shown this way. It's called order item. So each order item represents one row in this order form. So you can see the actual name of the title of the column is item. So this will be a product number. So if your uh, Macintosh uh, laptop is product number one in your database, item number one will show up here. Where is the description going to come from? Well, that's going to be stored in the, in the products table. So there is a description or a name there. Then each of these rows is going to have a quantity a unit price and a subtotal. So quantity, quantity is probably going to show up right here in the order item. So the order item is going to represent each row in the table of that uh, invoice. And so this model here is pretty close to what you're trying to accomplish with our problem statement. So in our problem statement we have uh, a user's table a weapons table which is like our product and it doesn't say here but we are going to need an orders table and then an orders details table. Now how about this part about looking for historic um, uh, references to everything that I've purchased before. Where am I going to get that from? Well let's take a look here at our database and figure out which table is going to provide the history of what I bought. Well that simply is the orders table. So if I have a date for my order, then I can go and search by date for everything that I have ordered. Here's an interesting feature that you'll see in many databases. If you have a many-to-many -many relationship, such as each order can have many products, and each product can show up in many orders, how are you going to join those together? Because you can't join a many-to-many -many relationship unless you have an intermediate table, which is what we have here so the order item. Let me show you another example of a many-to-many -many relationship. So let's go back into the Northwind database. And you can see that we have a customer and a customer demographic table. So this application wants to categorize our customers and each customer can fall into many demographics and each demographic can have many customers. So what's a demographic? So a demographic might be somebody that is at a certain age group, over 65 years old, or somebody that's rich, their income is above a certain level, or a certain ethnic group. And so you might have many different properties to each customer. 
So how do they join each customer to a, a group of demographics and how do they have demographics that are joined to many customers? Well, in this case, the intermediate table just combines the two names. And that's pretty common in database design. So this is a table called customer, customer demo, or customer demographics. And so joining two tables automatically with their names like this is one way that you can have a many-to-many -many relationship. In the case that we're going to be building, uh, the products to orders is going to have an intermediate table and that is the orders details. So orders details is one name you can think of and then the other is just to combine two names together. Let's bring up some other examples. So I have a store database here. Uh, let's see what else might show up here. So let's study the second example. Um, it's from SQL Server Tutorials and what are they showing here? You're gonna find very similar uh, traits here. So we have customers to orders, we have orders to orders items, and then the orders items should join to products. And so that trio of tables is super common in any kind of a store. Now you can see that there are other tables that you can have that fall off of these, such as products can belong to categories, products can have stocks so that they have a warehouse to keep track of, and then products can belong to brands, and there's multiple um, products for each brand. Notice also that there is a staffs table, so you might have somebody that is a staff member that's associated with an order. So not only is a customer associated with the order, but the staff member that fulfilled it. And so your database tables can extend to have as many features as you can think of. So the best way, at least in my experience, is to learn from other people's designs. So I'm selecting another one further down the list. You can see another store. It's an e-commerce MySQL database, it says. We're going to have the same three patterns here. We have users attached to orders, orders attaches to details, and that attaches to products. There's that triple again. And then you can see that they have a few more things uh, tagged along as you go. So study all of the examples that you can find online. There's a reason for including some tables and not others. So you can't just lift an example out of a, of a picture like I'm using here and just say, hey, this is the only solution. Because you have to read very carefully what your uh, business application needs to do. And so depending on what the requirements are, you're going to have more or fewer tables. And so that's a good start here to figure out how to do our problem statement of building an e-commerce store.